Hello out there in YouTube land. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about a vampire film that has been pretty intensely requested. Yeah, and it's... We both... We both love and hate this mm. film. Um, it is the infamous Bram Stoker's Dracula. So, you know, this was Francis Ford Coppola's version of the Dracula story. Mm-hmm. My giant beef, giant because I will rant, is the fact it never should have been called Bram Stoker's Dracula. No. Why? Because for everyone who has not read the book, Dracula is not a love story. Dracula uh -huh. is a predatory leech. Yes. So, to call a film Bram Stoker's Dracula... When the story has nothing to do with the novel itself except for the figure of Dracula. Yeah. Is clickbait. And <laughs> it's... Is it a pretty story? Yes, it is. You know, you have love transcending time. You have the concept of reincarnation. You have anything and everything you want out of a vampire film. Yeah. If they would have just called it Dracula, okay, fine. There have been numerous co covers, not covers, but remakes of Dracula over the years. But this is not Bram Stoker's no. vision of Dracula. The So far, the closest that I have seen to the novel was directed by Jess Franco in the 1970s called Count Dracula. And Another one that was close was the BBC mm -hmm. production in the 70s. Close, but... Still not, not exactly there. it. So we have yet to see, in our opinion, we have yet to see an actual rendition of Bram Stoker's Dracula. But, that being said, let's get into this movie a little bit. Yeah. So we have a very young Keanu Reeves. Yes. We're talking only a couple years after, like, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Yeah. So he's, you know, baby-faced Keanu Reeves. Yep. Why playing not? Jonathan Harker. Winona Ryder playing Mina Murray. Um, I forget the lady that plays Lucy. I don't know, but her hair is beautiful. It is. Um, um, Anthony Hopkins, of course, plays Van Helsing. Okay. And then you have the impeccable Gary Oldman playing Dracula. And he does a very good Dracula. He does. The only... I had some issues with some of the, like, just the visuals and the costuming that they mm -hmm. had that man in. The hair. The infamous hair. Yeah. My other thing is the strange dog-inspired armor for the Vlad Sepish series yeah. at the beginning of the movie. It looks... <laughs> forgive me, it looks like musculature under skin so sort of and then you have kind of an anubis helmet yes. thing and i don't know what in the hell that has to do with dracula or vlad Zeppa's shit it's strange and i didn't so when you know the demeter docks and dracula enters society looking for mina um and he kind of lures lucy out i am not the biggest fan of the costuming and effects that they did when he lures Lucy into the garden. That's yeah. more werewolf to me. I did think it was interesting that they tried to show all the archetypes of the creatures that Dracula could turn into. Because there's the scene where he kind of looks like the bat. There's mm -hmm. the scene he sort of looks like a wolf man. And then, of course, he does mist and so on and so forth. However, the application of those effects on Gary Oldman were not necessarily done that well. Yeah. The other thing I have an issue with is the scene of Lucy in the Crypt. Mm -hmm. While beautiful, if someone has been living in a crypt for a while, white would look like hell. Yes, it would. It would not be stark white with just some random blood. I also do have to hand it to the actress they are trying to move around in that dress. Oh. Kudos, lady. <laughs> uh, yeah. Kudos, because I would have broken my neck on those stairs. Oh, hell yes. Other than that, it's beautifully shot. 
The sets are wonderful. It is, and you kind of get like the blue fire and stuff that you kind of associate loosely with the Transylvanian version of Dracula. Mm-hmm. You get a, more of the lore. And I like the fact that they also added the whole bit of like the absinthe with Dracula mm-hmm. and Mina because during that time period absinthe was had its huge heyday so yes. that added to a bit of the environmental reality of the time. As did, like, kind of that almost carnival-esque movie, and of course, you know, the wolf was... Yes. I would take that wolf home. (laughs) She was beautiful. But, um, overall, you know, if you're looking at this, it is a romance. Yes. It's kind of what set the stage for a lot of the subsequent Dracula movies, as we'll probably get into later. Yeah. Which is, you know, the same thing that happened with Dracula Untold, which mm-hmm. we'll also have another rant on. Yeah, we will. But, <laughs> you know, if it hadn't been called Bram Stoker's Dracula, I would have been totally fine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the movie in and of itself is good. Yeah. It's just not Bram Stoker's. It's Francis so, Ford Coppola's Dracula. Yes. So, something that we, you know, would emphasize to anybody who is interested in kind of why we're saying these things, go grab the book. Yeah, because the book is very much a story of this ancient creature who has not been human for a very, very, very long time. And he no longer has human emotions. And that is... If you could take an element from Dracula Untold yes, and scoot it back into this, you would get what Dracula was. Mm-hmm. So, you know, with that in mind, I think Dracula Untold has its own merits. It has its merits, much like this version of Dracula has its own merits. So, you know, one thing that I really did enjoy was the different scenes where you know you remove from kind of London and places like that to Transylvania and you would see all these different elements. Mm-hmm. So they did and a good I, job the there. one thing I other one other thing I liked was when Harker ends up in the hospital in Budapest. Mm-hmm. They did a really good job at showing what a clinic would have been like back then. Yeah. It was dirty. It was not clean. It was not pristine. <laughs> you were living next door to your your other patients. Exactly. Um, so that that was really well done. Also, the insane asylum scenes were very well done. Yes. I was not a huge fan of Anthony Hopkins as Van Helsing. I wasn't either. And the biggest reason is that, you know, partially he's typecast because of his role of Hannibal Lecter. Mm-hmm. But for me, Van Helsing was always kind of this almost soft-spoken kind of man who took on this quest to rid the world of vampires because he had no choice. He was bound because he was one of the few people that believed. So mm-hmm. there weren't very many people who could get rid of the scourge, so he took it upon himself to become this person, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Whereas Hopkins played Van Helsing almost like a swashbuckler. He did. And what kind of was interesting about that version of Van Helsing was that he came on scene recommended and then yes. automatically accepted for, well, this is a vampire. Yeah. And there wasn't like a progression of, well, why would you think it was a vampire, blah, blah, blah. In the novel, Van Helsing is actually a professor that knows about all different types of supernatural creatures. And then when he comes in, he recognizes the telltale signs that would lead someone to believe this is definitely a vampire. So thus then he went down the vampire path. Mm -hmm. So it's done well in the book and describes everything that would lead one to believe, okay, yes, Van Helsing is correct. This has to be this creature, and we have to figure out how to fight it. Whereas in this film, 
there's none of that. And I realized they did that probably for watch time and they didn't probably, want to yeah. concentrate too much on backstory. But I think they were too fast with it. I also think they were a bit forward in the, the age of what the women yeah. would have been like. They were forward in the costuming. Mm -hmm. And I think that was to kind of give that, like, I'm showing more freedom, I'm mm -hmm. showing more this, more that. But at the same time, I do question some of the validity of that I mean, given the time period. Bram Stoker's Dracula, if you're talking about Bram Stoker's vision, mm -hmm. then you'd have to just completely go 100% by canon. Canon... Mina, while she does talk to everyone, she is the sweeter of the two women. Yeah. Lucy is a bit more forward. She would be, well, to use like modern jargon, she'd be a player. Yeah. She was wanting all these men and stuff. Mina was the shy one. Mina liked to read. Mina wasn't necessarily interested in finding a husband right this second. She was engaged to Harker, but Harker was also flirted with by Lucy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that chemistry is very important to the story because it leads one into the, yes, it does make sense as to why Lucy would be the one to become a vampire because right. she's the one willing to, okay, there's, ooh, here's a new Romanian count. He has money, da 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 you know. And where they missed that in the movie because she didn't even mention the Romanian no. count. She never actually met Dracula in his human form in the movie. Yeah. So those are issues with it. Comment down below what other things you've noticed with different versions of Dracula and why you like them or don't. Mm -hmm. And uh, until next time. Bye.